When people think about seafood in Japan, more often than not, they think about sushi, but not me. Whenever I leave Japan, what I crave the most is, without a doubt, unagi. So please imagine my excitement now that we have traveled down to what I am calling the unagi capital of Japan, Nagoya. If you ask anybody living in Japan where the best eel is, they're absolutely gonna say Nagoya. And it's literally an hour and a half away by train. Every time we've come to Nagoya, we've actually had unadong and we've smashed their specialty. Hitsumaboshi! Hitsumaboshi! And we've just never ever shared it with you guys. We're gonna do this professionally yes. because we're professionals and Calm. I'm gonna contain my excitement yes. as much as I can. Okay, we've just left Nagoya Station and we're heading to a fishmonger called Nakasho and they've been in the business for over 90 years, which is a crazy amount of time to be mongering things. And the question we have, the very professional foodie question we have is, can you monger other things? Like, can you be like an octopus monger? Is there an or like apple an, monger? A berry monger? How do I start monging things? Funny monger. Like, I mean, what does it mean to mong? To monger. Have I ever monged can anything you now in my mong? life? These are the important questions. We'll contemplate them. My name is Higashi. Unagi no shigoto hajimeta no wa, eh, 10 nen mai gurai kara, zutto unagi no shigoto yatte mo. 1 nen da to, 120 man gurai no unagi ga kok kara shukka sarete mo. That's a big boy. Big boy. Wow. Big boy. <laughs> もう触った時の手触りとあとはカラー色この胴体の大きさでうなぎがいいか悪いか分かる Ah, uh, totally. Mochi mochi. I got it, yeah. Nagoya niwa oishi unagiya san ga taksan aru kara, eh, to Nihon ni kita toki niwa zehi Nagoya ni yotte unagi o tabete te kudasai. I'm feeling very happy. We right now are at Unagi Yondaime Kikukawa, and that's a very hard word for me to remember, mm -hmm. but I did it because. Unagi. Unagi. 10 points to Gryffindor if anybody knows what that's from. Speaking of which, don't I look so Gryffindorian today? You look like a very stern teacher. I'm here to learn and to teach and to spread the word of Unagi. I feel like a little intimidated, like you're gonna walk around with like a ruler stick and I'm gonna get smacked if I get a fact incorrectly. Well, I mean, that could happen. I could just start eating your Unagi instead. I don't have to worry about it because I know so much about Unagi now. I am the one that's hyper informed. Okay, <laughs> let me hear about this. I read Kafka on the shore. I don't remember that much about it except for three things. Okay. One, Johnny Walker kills a lot of cats. Okay. Two, they have to flip a really heavy stone. Okay. And number three, the main character really likes to eat unagi once a month as a treat. Oh. And that part resonated with me so much. Because you wanted to have it once a month as a treat? The rest of the plot, I don't know what happens, mm. how it ends, I don't remember, but the unagi, I remember. Unagi. Excuse me, I thought I was supposed to be learning facts about unagi, but all I'm learning about Cultural is Cultural references. See... Cultural oh, references. Okay. So this is the culture first. You'll get the facts next. Unagi fact. So you remember at the beginning I was talking about, can you say it for me? Hitsumaboshi. 
Uh, it feels different when you say it somehow. It's not Hitsa so your boshi, okay. it's Hitsa my boshi. So Hitsa my boshi is Nagoya's jam. And basically instead of just serving the eel on top of the rice with the sauce and just like eating that, they serve it with all these little side parts so you can kind of enjoy it in four different ways, which I really like because sometimes we talk about how we get a little bit like the same thing over and over again. For real, you it's know? it's exciting because like when you get just in Tokyo eel, then it'll just be sauce and rice, you eat it. Yeah. When you're halfway through, you still know what the rest of the meal yeah. is gonna taste like. But here they keep on changing things up and keeping you so excited, mm. like I am, for all the eel. Unagi fact! Another thing that makes Nagoya style unagi unique is that they don't steam it before mm -hmm. grilling. Usually in Tokyo, they will steam it first and then finish it on the grill. Not here. Straight up grill, just like a pro. Not that you're not a pro in Tokyo, but this is... I'm gonna let you keep circling your way out of this. And the other thing that I find exciting is that every place has their own tare, like their own sauce. So the kind of way when we go for yakitori and mm -hmm. we have different sauce or salt to choose from, mm -hmm. it's never the same at every place. So there was like a huge, ginormous vat of sauce back there that's just kind of like gathering flavor right. and getting more delicious oh as time gosh. goes on. It smells delicious. I gotta laugh. Ooh, one person laughed at my joke, one person Ooh. laughed at my joke. I have a feeling I'm gonna be scolded by the teacher for talking too much in class. Mm, pick me, I have so much more to say. Already. Arigato gozaimasu. Wow. This is. Uh, amazing. You know what we have to do, right? Oh, please. We have to hold back <laughs> and we have to take a thousand sexy food porn shots of this. Brace yourself, Simon. <laughs> no, bad Simon! What a beautiful, beautiful bowl. Itadakimasu. So there's a specific way you're supposed to eat this. You're wow. supposed to divide it into four. The first time, you're just supposed to try it on mm -hmm. its own to see what it tastes like. So you're gonna use your little tiny wooden paddle to kind of scoop out a little bit of it. And then the second time around is when you can kind of start changing the flavor a little bit, but we're gonna get there. First, we're just gonna try it in its purest form. Just try it in its Ooh. pure form. my favorite seafood in the world. It's so, so fluffy and nothing about this is fishy. I no. think that can be intimidating for people because yeah. they feel like it's a type of an ocean taste. But no, this is the meatiest not. seafood. Like it tastes more like meat than it does like it seafood. It does for sure. It's so soft. It's got a little bit of crisp on it. Kind of like a really good like crispy chicken wing. I think Nagoya's got that down because yeah. they've got the crispy chicken wing jam and they know how to keep it moist on the inside and crispy on the outside. That's the real tough part because you know eel is such a thin piece of meat once you finally fillet it. Once you start grilling it on that high heat you could just use up all the fat, crisp it up and it could be nothing. But wow it's just got such a nice color to it. How do you feel about the tare as well? It's not overpowering. And not too sweet, right? Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. it. You go to some places and it's just so mm -hmm. very, very sweet mm -hmm. and kind of like the stickiness 
uh, of the crunch kind of makes it taste like candy a mm -hmm. bit. This exactly does not have that, just so light. savory. And so light. Mm. Like I'm just like, oops, I've already finished and you're behind me. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> My gosh, Simon, you're moving so slowly. <laughs> it's like you don't even like eel. <laughs> it really seems to me like if you continue this way, I'll just have to eat both of our meals. No, mm. Round two. Round two. I'll be honest, I put a piece of wasabi on and then I lost it somewhere, so we're gonna You're gonna get it. a wasabi yes. bomb. Yeah. So for the second dish, first time you're supposed to have it pure. Second time, this is where you could add the toppings like the wasabi and the seaweed and the green onion. It doesn't need it, but it just gives you a little bit of variety if you want some. I mean, if you think about it, it's not like you can go to a place in North America, order a hamburger and ask for four different ways. Mm -hmm. It's pretty unique, right? That is a very good mm -hmm. analogy, unless mm -hmm. you get four different burgers. Mm -hmm. oh. I actually think the seaweed is really incredibly matching with this right now. Mm. The toasted nuttiness of the nori on the outside. It's actually mega enhancing all the flavors of the eel right now. Mm -hmm. I do feel like this is a very different bowl now. Like before, like I tasted a lot more of the smoke mm -hmm. and the char. Here now you have so many more things popping around. I felt like the sweetness was actually nearly muted. The green onions and a little tiny kick of wasabi, which you could barely taste by the way, it wasn't mm -hmm. hot. No. And then for me, like I said, I feel like the nori was the winner. It just made all the crispy edges kind of pop out and taste more nutty. Like when you have that kind of crispy nut flavor rather than having um, like a sweet saucy flavor. Exactly. Oh my gosh. And we still the third way to try it and then we have whatever way we want after that not even halfway done i know are, are you happy with our journey to nagoya for you to be trying your most favorite thing ever i'm happy with my journey to japan mm -hmm. with my journey oh well, i know what in life i know what's happening right now we all know what's happening right now so many times mm -hmm. you can question yourself have i made the right choices in life mm -hmm. have i should i have Con done continue this on. should i have done that mm -hmm. but when you have something this good and you realize every one of your memories is footsteps leading up to here. Mm -hmm. You realize you've done the right thing. Hey, please don't you. Three. Keep, keep talking. This is what is called love and tolerance. Love is patient. Love is kind. I don't think he wanted to give this to me if I'm being honest with you right now. No, but I've tolerated it. Why does food taste better when you take it from someone else's plate? Oh. I don't know, let me try. No. <laughs> I'm three, eat. We're going in for the last stage in which you do the same thing with a little bit of green onions, a little bit of wasabi, a little bit of the nori, and then you have this little tiny teapot here, and inside of it is their own house dashi, which is just, you know, Japanese soup stock, which we've talked about before. We're gonna pour that on top with everything else inside of it and kind of mix it up a little bit, and you're eating it almost like an eel stew. Ooh. Mm. Let's see how this one is. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my god. I feel like that's made to mix all the flavors together in the end. Because you have that kind of soup stock feeling that kind of absorbs into the rice. The rice has already got the tari on it. Mm. Got that salt kind of flavor left over from the eel. Almost becomes it's like a noodle. Like the rice tastes so flavorful, right? I'm speechless. Are you? I'm just... Are you in a is, moment right now? I'm in a moment. Yeah. All of this. It was just a delightful, delightful moment. Mm -hmm. With the dashi, you now feel the whole dish at the back of your tongue. A savory bomb of delicious, meaty fish. <laughs> I'm starting to functionally shut down here. <laughs> this is the biggest piece of veal that I've ever had at a restaurant. I think that's the specialty of this place. And God damn, I'm full. But mama didn't raise no quitter. That's right. I will eat all of this mm -hmm. and I will eat all of yours and I will eat all this extra one. Okay, well I can eat mine, so don't worry about me. You can leave me, al you can leave me alone, it'll be fine. <laughs> We've reached the last phase of our, our eating experience. Mm. Um, it's quite sad actually, you know, you're going through it bit by bit and you're thinking to yourself, wow, it's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I would be like able to eat this much food, but I am slowing down here on purpose because I want it to last a little bit longer. For real, I'm amazed that you've been eating all your food and you actually stole a piece off of me as well. What? Like, it's that good. Yeah. I'm appreciating this a lot more after going to the fishmonger because it's almost like a farm to table experience. We mm. see where the eel is coming from. You learn so much about how it's all done. And you come here and you get such a better appreciation of it. If you are an Onagi fan like I am, you have to come to Nagoya and try this out because this is a beautiful food experience.
Uh, uh, the traditional walk. So I take it you're happy? Unagi, unagi, yeah. unagi, unagi. So thank you so much to JTB for sponsoring this video. Uh, they want you guys to come out and visit Nagoya in general. It's not just about these particular shops, although we recommend that it's going to be an easy win if you come here. But I feel like we've learned a lot more about eel, even though we loved it to begin with. Right? We didn't really know so much nitty gritty. If you guys want to come visit Nagoya and you want to check out all the delicious things they have to offer, check out the info box. We have some helpful links in there that might help you with like booking a hotel or traveling up here. I think I just need to be carried away. I, I just, feel so full. Do they do takeaway? Just something. You, this how? How can you take it away? Over. It has this to be. This can't be over. Yeah. I feel like a kid being kicked out of like Disneyland. Okay, unagi ice cream. Unagi, unagi, they have some over here. Unagi, 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 unagi. Unagi, 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 unagi. That's a real song from a supermarket I go to. Anyhow, if you want to see more, click on the bloopers right here. Or if you want to find out about Nagoya's chicken wings, they are amazing from Yamachan. Click on the video right here. So good.